Look, we've had a lot of millionaire clients and even a billionaire. And just because they have a lot of money in the bank doesn't mean they're immediately successful with women. Lynn, tell them about the three types of successful guys that struggle with women. It's the people pleasers, the overthinkers, and the boasters. If you're successful and you're struggling with women, chances are you're falling into one of these three categories. First, let's talk about the people pleaser, which is a lot of our clients. For example, one of our clients named Raul from India became a doctor simply to please his family, despite mm -hmm. not really wanting to be a doctor. And I remember on the work, first workshop that he attended, he just had this pleasing energy. He would offer to pay for things that he didn't need to pay for. He would offer to like clean the room and do all these random things. Wow. And it just seemed like he was trying to seek validation. And after giving him a lot of feedback and coaching on overcoming that people pleasing type of behavior and energy. And on his approaches, he had that energy. He would mm -hmm. say things like, oh, I don't mean to bother you. And he would talk really high pitched in this pleasing tonality, like, hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. And that type of energy just isn't attractive. It's like this overly nice guy energy. And after going through our coaching program and letting go of those nice guy behaviors and, and people pleasing traits, he eventually lost his virginity and he started traveling the world. I don't know if he's still a doctor or not, but I know he started like really just doing the things that he wanted despite some pushback from his family and obviously he got way better results in his dating life. He felt much freer. He was he was much happier. So in this category, we see guys that tend to be very concerned with how they come across. They don't want to seem disrespectful at all. They tend to very much play it safe. And so they will soften the things that they say. It's like what you said before, that, that waiter mentality, but to another degree. So they'll never say anything that's risque or super direct or bold. They are always have that kind of like fine line of plausible deniability when they are trying to escalate with women and they end up being super frustrated. Something that I've, I've noticed actually too, Matt, with our students, it's not uncommon for guys that are from Eastern societies or more collective societies and civilizations. So when there's a lot of shame, there is a lot of onus on you do right by your family. Or, or do right by the village. And there's pros and cons in that, right? But but when it comes to attraction, every time a woman's gonna wanna see a confident version, a version of when a guy is completely at peace with his desires and his attraction. And that people-pleasing side completely defeats that. It's just not conducive with showing your, your true attraction and it always will get you friend-zoned. Yeah, because it has that energy of please like me, which ultimately pushes people away. And it's kind of counterintuitive because because they think, hey, if I'm doing all these likable things for other people, they're gonna reciprocate, but it actually has the opposite effect. It, it ends up repelling them. And at the same time, like you said, they're not making any moves. They're not flirty with her. They stay in the friend zone because that's where it's safe. They never wanna get out of their comfort zone. They're not direct. The woman doesn't even know that he's interested in her or she never has interest, really. And the sad thing is, is that they end up getting really frustrated because they, they're putting so much energy, they're exerting so much effort into doing these things that they consider nice, which are nice, by the way, to other people. But the energy in which they're performing these tasks is not true. It's not pure. What I mean by that is there's always a backhanded expectation. Oh, I do these nice things for you. So in return, you will like me or in return, uh, I will feel validated. And whenever a gesture is done with some kind of expectation in return, it's not pure. It's not true. And what ends right. up happening is they get walked all over, they are seen as weak, they are basically taken advantage of, and it causes so much anger and resentment and hostility, and they're ashamed of that. So to the outside, they seem like really nice, sweet people, but in the inside, they're frustrated with that sexual shame, they're frustrated with society, and they feel very alone. And essentially, she's not feeling that masculine provider-protector energy, right? It's all mm -hmm. this soft, weak, unmasculine, or you could say feminine energy energy, which of course is not going to attract a feminine woman. Not at all. It's really lacking the tension that it requires in order for the attraction to happen. But the thing 
is that tension tends to very much scare them. And so they're always on that better be safe than sorry kind of mentality. Yeah, Robert Glover calls that covert contract in the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. They're actually very manipulative because they're doing all these nice things, pleasing people, but with the expectation of getting their needs met by those people, which is really manipulative when you think about it. So since these guys aren't stepping into tension, part of the solution is for them to just get used to putting themselves into tense situations and become being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Like approaching women. Yeah, exactly. For example, approaching women, which is what we help guys do. Also things like going to the gym. It might not seem like it, but yes, of course, there's tension when you're lifting that heavy weight or playing sports is yeah. another one. And not just like, oh, playing it for fun, but like going all out and, and giving it your best. And another one is radical honesty, because remember, they keep saying things people feel good. And so if they voice their true needs or their true wants and desires, their very words it's gonna come off too creepy or too bold. It's gonna turn somebody off. And so being radically honest with someone's intentions and someone's feelings. Yeah, that's definitely gonna create some tension. They're gonna feel that tension in their body, right? They're always trying to avoid that tension. So really it's about bringing up that tension. You can even do things like taking cold showers because there's gonna be a lot of resistance. It's gonna be a lot of tension. And when you can start doing things like that, like stepping into that bold masculine version of yourself, instead of just staying in your safety zone, your comfort zone, that that's how you, you build that masculine part of you. Another one that sometimes we have our clients do is social freedom exercises. For example, I had, I remember I was doing a workshop in Cancun and I was miking up a client, his name was Vinod, on the beach. And I remember him going like, you're doing this right here in front of everybody? I looked at him and I yelled as loud as I could, yes, I'm doing this right here in front of everyone. And a couple people looked over and like, huh? And then they just went back to doing what they were doing, not caring. And so, and the reason was because they, they, they want everybody around them to look at them a certain way that they are a good guy who doesn't rock the boat. So when you do crazy things and you draw attention to yourself and people are potentially judging you, it helps you let go of that wanting to be liked by everybody type energy. That and also they're afraid of disruption. They're afraid of calling attention to themselves. They're afraid of, of basically being a nuisance or bothering someone. And so when you can step into that and actually get that kind of attention and, and realize, hey, it's not so bad. That's when you start experiencing those shifts. The next type of successful guy who's usually pretty bad with women is the overthinker. I was definitely in this category. I went to college to study computer science and I was surrounded by guys like this. And I remember being in college, wanting to approach women. I would study and study and study all this pickup stuff that was out there. And I only approached one woman all of my five years going to University of California, Irvine. And a big part of that was because I was always in my head. I saw beautiful women everywhere but I was just always in my head overthinking it, trying to remember all the steps. When I was in interactions, like for example, I go to a bar or a party or somewhere like that and you know, get introduced to a girl, I was just so in my head trying to remember all the steps and all the lines and worry about if she's showing me signs of interest or not. It did not work. I did not get a lot of results in those days. Yeah, and these are guys that most likely are in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, math. They tend to be super analytical they're over logical, they are uh, reserved, they're more inward. They tend to see the world as, as black and white. They tend to, to see the world as equations, right? If I do this, then it must equal this. And they tend to really struggle with emotions. They, they tend to struggle with the nuances of communication. They just come off rigid. They come off a little too uptight. They don't really feel that mojo and that, and that spark that women really crave. Yeah, those guys typically cannot connect with women. They, when they're in interactions with women or on dates with women, it tends to be more like a job interview, kind of like robots. They don't have a lot of emotion in their tonality, very monotone. I remember back in college, a girl that I did have a crush on, she actually told me that I was really monotone. I remember like actually like working on that for the next 
next couple weeks, like trying to be more expressive and go up and down in my tonality. I guess I sounded like a robot back then. You know, trying to connect with them feels like either hitting a brick wall or on the opposite end, it feels like an interrogation. It's just question, mm -hmm. answer, question, answer. There is no lightness. There's no playfulness. There's no emotion. There's no passion. There's no drama. There's no any of the, the spectrum of emotions. It's just very straightforward. Yeah. So as you can see, they're very smart guys, which can make them very successful, but usually very, very bad with women. So the solution, or at least one of the solutions is getting in a habit and doing things that get you out of your head and more into your body. Again, doing things like going to the gym where you're feeling your body, especially sports and dancing is a big one. These guys tend to be very bad at dancing, but taking a dance class really helps them get out of their head and like into their body. At first, they're gonna be in their head analyzing everything, but eventually they get a lot more in tune with their body. You don't attract a woman through logic and by like thinking in equations and what do I do next? And here's step one and step two and step three. You connect with her by how you're feeling, how you're being. She can feel your emotions. And if she can't, if she feels like you're cut off, she can't be attracted to you. 100%, you can never turn the attraction on using logic. And then another one too, Matt, that has given our students amazing success is the connecting with women workshop that we do. In that workshop, we specifically work on how to make women feel the three S's we talk about, special, sexy, and safe. How to get deeply connected to a woman where she's feeling the spark, she's she's feeling the chemistry, she's feeling his his strength and his vulnerability. And these are, are the good news is these are skills that you can build and that you can work on and, and continue to refine, but you need to know what to do and to have someone help you along the way. Yeah, the Connecting with Women workshop is probably the best way for guys to really get into their body and learn like what it's like connecting with women. And they realize it's not about what they say, because that's what everybody thinks. Like, what do I say to create a connection? They realize it's how they're being in their body. And they don't even have to say anything and they can still have a massive deep connection with a woman. And let's talk about the third type of successful guy that is not successful or not that successful with women is the boaster. Out of the three, he's probably the most successful because he usually is in his masculine energy, but he's just too full on. He comes off as bragging, flashy, trying to impress people. It's always me, me, me. He hogs the conversation. So women also have a tough time connecting with him because he doesn't let them speak enough. He's always talking about himself. These are the, the status seekers. These are the guys that basically look at women and is she hot? Great. Then let me pull these moves. With these guys, they normally, they can do okay. They can get the dates normally maybe it's not mm -hmm. the nines and tens but eight and a half sometimes but their real problem is getting past the dates getting into a relationship because they know how to look really good they come off, as they, confident. They come off super confident but it's overcompensating they are basically you know putting in so much value into impressing her and how they're coming across and they're they don't have the relationship and the connection skills that women really want he tends to overcompensate because deep, deep, deep down inside, there is a lack of self-worth. There is some self-esteem issues going mm -hmm. on. And so the yep. way that he treats his self-esteem is that he puts himself up, he puts himself above everyone else. And so he yep. looks at things or at people as what can he attain? Who or what can make him feel and look bigger, better, the best? But it's really to overcompensate why he, the, the, the smallness that he feels inside. This, you know, this happened actually just recently with one of the students where every time he would get a perceived rejection or every time he get um, constructive criticism, even if it came from a really good place, which which it did, uh, his ego couldn't handle it. They, they tend to have really big mm -hmm. egos. And so he would get really defensive and he would put down whoever it was that was giving him that advice because in his head, it was an, an attack. And so he said, oh, well, who in the world is he or who in the world is she? She's a no one. She doesn't have the right to judge me. They are constantly seeing the world as a battle. The flip side for that uh, is is the people pleaser and sometimes the overthinker where they too may struggle with that self-esteem and self-worth, but they do the opposite. They put people above them. And so they are basically catering yep. to everyone else and, and showing everyone else like, oh, you know, I can make you feel good. I can do these favors or, or all these nice gestures for you. And I'm just kind of diminishing myself. Both types 
struggle with the self-esteem. So it all really comes down to worthiness. A lot of boasters, they'll use outside things like cars or you know expensive things to make themselves feel valid or validated. For example, I had a client who's a very successful doctor and he hired me for a one-on-one -on -one and he was insistent upon using his Lamborghini as a way to attract women. Told him it was a bad idea. I told him it wouldn't work, but he wanted to try. So we went to a very busy street in New York City, parked his Lamborghini and sat there, or actually stood by the Lamborghini for about an hour and not one woman came up to him. And boasters always do this, right? They always want to use external things or even things like their muscles to attract women. Problem is it doesn't work very well because women can sense that insecurity. They can feel when a, a guy is using something else instead of just having a high sense of self-worth, which is of course what we help our clients with. They have a ton of things. They look amazing on paper, but they're not mm -hmm. able to truly connect. And that is really what's the most important. So let's talk about the solution for these guys. I think these are the hardest guys to crack because they protect their ego so much. They don't want to even admit that they have any type of problem. And that's really the first part of the solution is to admit that they're not perfect. And they should ask themselves, how would I feel about myself without all the stuff that I've acquired without the muscles or, you know, all the all the fancy things. I mean, they, these guys have to really dig deep because like we both said, they have a lot of insecurities and they've like built this image of themselves that's so like on a pedestal, they really need to bring themselves off the pedestal and see themselves as equal to everybody else. That they're not really all that special. I want to highlight what you're saying because this is going to be the most challenging thing that they've ever done. This to them feels like a mini death because rejection to them comes like a mini death. A lot of these guys, these boasters actually come from difficult childhoods for the most part. There's some high achieving expectations there. There's some uh, emotionally, uh, abandoned wounds there and so when they're not approved of or they're not they don't get that validation that they seek it feels like a mini death the point here is to get vulnerable yep. to get vulnerable to dig deep really separate your sense of self-worth with your accomplishments with your achievements with your possessions and to start seeing and to valuing the the connections in people the the light in people the ability to to completely uh, have experiences versus is things with people and this is this is a difficult path for them and one way to do it which is super hard for these guys oftentimes is to just start meeting women start going out and approaching women without using their status without the Lamborghini you got to start doing it you got to start going out there approaching women even without the fancy clothes and everything just look like a normal guy and start having just normal interactions with women and when they start doing that and they start facing rejection and actually get rejected because they can stop seeing rejection as a personal attack on them. That it's, it's not about them. It doesn't need to crush their ego. Another thing they can start doing is get more curious about people and separate the status. So regardless of who you're talking to, what, how much they make or how well liked they are, uh, start truly connecting with people in terms of what the person you're talking to is about. So this is going to apply whether you're talking to women, right? Stop seeing her as the nine or 10 that you, you're trying to impress so that she can become a trophy to you or the guy that you just met at some networking event. Stop attaching their worth based on what they're showing on the outside with who they are on the inside because guys that fall into this category they have a really hard hard time getting truly vulnerable they had a, they have a hard time letting go of the performance and the vibrato and start to really kind of show the vulnerability and also be attracted or be curious i should say to the person they're talking to their vulnerability and what what makes the other person tick what inspires the other person truly getting layers and layers and layers deeper yeah so stop talking about yourself so much and be focused on other people that you're meeting. Be curious about them. Ask questions to really find out. To summarize, our people pleaser and our boaster, they're both struggling with true sense of lack of self-worth. And the solution for them is they really need to work on getting that validation and their self-esteem from within. And then we have our overthinker yep. who really struggles with connection, who really struggles with emotion. He, he struggles with creating that spark. And for him, the solution is we've got to get him out of his head, more into his 
his body so that he can create those connections. And that's exactly why we do what we do. That's exactly why we have our coaching program. Exactly. That's why we help guys let go of that feeling of guilt, shame, insecurities, emotional traumas, baggage, all the things that are creating that sense of unworthiness so they can let that go in order to create a sense of true fulfillment, true confidence, and truly love themselves, flaws and alls. It's why we bring in models to our workshops so that they can practice connecting with them. They can practice getting out of their head and feel what it's like to turn a woman on right there on the spot, even without using any words. And it's why we help you guys pinpoint your blind spots because there are things that you're doing or a way that you're being that you're completely unaware of that's unintentionally pushing women away. And you're gonna keep doing those things until you have a coach or a mentor pinpoint those things and help you stop doing them and stop being that way that's turning women off and start embodying the true masculine, powerful, authentic version of yourself that can easily and effortlessly attract the women that you really want. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in and you wanna learn more, then click the link down below and apply for our coaching program where we'll hop on a call with you and see if you're a good fit. And if you are, then we'll see you inside our mentorship program.